Uh, hi team. Uh, so today our topic is uh, override Omniscript element with LWC component. So the presenters are myself, Kadiravan, I'm a senior software engineer one, and uh, I do have my team member, who is Chola Darnika, she's also senior software engineer one. And today's agenda. So we are going to uh, see about the introduction about the Omniscript. And then we are going to talk about the elements in Omniscript, which is uh, actions, groups, functions, inputs, and the Omniscript elements, I think. And then we are going to see about uh, how to enable LWC to interact with the Omniscript. And then we'll be going to see about the Omniscript base mix and interface component. And then we are going to see about the uh, override the elements with the custom LWC. And then a demo and question and answer sessions. And so the first topic is the introduction to Omniscript. So many of us already know that uh, what is Omniscript since we are uh, concentrating more on velocity process libraries such as uh, public sector, health, insurance, financial services, media, and uh, entertainment and communications. So if you members not knowing what is Omniscript, uh, it is easy for you guys to compare the Omniscript with the lightning flow. Um, where, where it is a screen flow. So in the Salesforce, uh, the same set of uh, screens and drag and drop the inputs, everything will be similar when comparing with the uh, flow and uh, Omniscript. <laughs> and Omniscript allow you to build a guided path for completing a business process. And uh, it serves as a configurable way of creating a seamless customer experience. Here step by step, we will be processing all the uh, user guided inputs. And then uh, you can create the Omniscript using a drag and drop editor that enables you to group various elements such as uh, actions, functions, here yeah, using formulas, and then uh, screens, a uh, set of blocks, a uh, radio set of blocks, and uh, then input fields and the groups, etc. So these are the things we are going to uh, have it in Omniscript. And uh, Omniscript provides a self-service interaction for our customers such as uh, troubleshooting, so this is all about the worry about Omniscript and then the elements. So regarding the elements, uh, this is our complete view of Omniscript. We'll be having screens and elements. So in the build, if you see here, uh, there will be a lot of actions, display, functions, group, input, and Omniscripts. So we'll be going to see about the one by one. So in the actions, we'll be having uh, Data adapter extract actions. So these actions uh, will be used to retrieve data from one or more related Salesforce object. Okay. You see here, I'm going to drag and drop the data adapter extract action. Here we could be able to create a new data adapter, or else we could be able to bind the data adapter. Okay, which is you have already created in your org. In the same way, we'll be having data adapter post action, which is used to save the record or else to create a new record. And uh, we do have a transform action. Transform action will be using to rename or restructure the set of inputs, restructuring the JSON data, converting the data. So all these things we could be able to do it here. But uh, this one will not help us to extract uh, uh, sorry, this one will not help us to read or write the Salesforce data. Okay. And uh, we do have a data adapter turbo actions. So in the turbo action, we could be able to uh, retrieve data from a single Salesforce object. Uh, in the previously, we do have data adapter extract action. In the data adapter extract action, we could be able to do uh, for uh, some multiple set of objects, but here you could be able to do it only for the single set of object. Okay, then next one is delete action. Uh, if you drag and drop the delete action, so this delete action is used to, to delete one or more records for a object. Okay, if you see here, we could be able to select an object over here. If it is account or contact, or else if you want to delete any of the records for your custom objects, we could be able to select all this object here and you need to set the ID. Okay, then this action will perform the delete inside your Salesforce object. The next one is uh, 
Dachshund envelope action. So Dachshund envelope action will helps us to email one or more recipient for signing or reviewing. Okay, this one helps us to send the mails uh, to the higher or else uh, to the manager of our contacts. And the Dachshund signature action will be used to uh, signing to the customers. So if they want to sign up uh, for your org or your uh, websites, we could be able to send them the Dachshund signature action or with the help of this action, they could be able to sign it or decline it. Okay. And we do have email action, HTTP actions. Uh, HTTP action, uh, so this one will use it to uh, make a call out, like uh, get the post, put or delete request through the, by using a REST API endpoints. Okay. And we do have integration procedure action. By using integration procedure action, we could be able to invoke another uh, uh, integration procedure to our Omni script. Okay. We do have metric action, navigations. So navigations, for navigations, uh, we could be able to uh, use some UI also here by using CSS. Uh, here, uh, default is blue, right? Because the button variant is brand. If you are changing to success, uh, it will duplicate with your green color. And if you are changing anything to destructive, it will be replicated with the red color. Okay, green, red, like this, we could be able to do. So, how we will be changing those uh, button colors by using R and LWC components in the same way, we could be able to manage everything over here. Okay, so by using navigation action, if you are uh, uh, if you are having the navigation action inside your uh, step, this is called the step. Inside the step, it could be available as a uh, button or else it could be available as a link and everything. Okay, we could be able to do like this. And uh, if you are drag and drop in the top, it could be uh, acting as a uh, separate action. Okay. Okay. We do have remote action. Remote action in the sense of calling your Apex classes. Okay. If you drag and drop this action inside your step, so here you could be able to add your class name and your exact method name. Okay. By using like this, you could be able to call your Apex class inside your Omni script. And then uh, this is more. This is uh, this topic is more important, uh, which is uh, set error and set values. Okay, so set error is used to <coughs> validate your errors in your previous step. Okay, if you are using set errors, this one could be available only in the after the steps. Okay, so this is step one, and then we will be having the step and step two. So set errors will be used to. Do uh, work with the previous steps error conditions. Okay. And then uh, we do have uh, set values. Set values always will be using uh, prior to the steps. Okay. If I need to get any of the values or uh, need to okay. modify the JSON or else need to concatenate uh, two of the elements to a single element, we could be able to use it in a uh, set values. Okay. So by using set values, we could be able to get the next step initial conditions. Okay. So this is all about the actions. And then we do have a display. I in display will be using for a line break and text block elements. Uh, I do have example over here. If you are using a line line break, so we could be able to align it. Okay. We could be able to align the field width. And if you are using a text block, uh, this one will be available in a text subset. So here, if you are typing this, uh, which text, and if you see the code over here, it will be available in a CSS format. Sorry, HTML format. Okay. Here, you could be able to do some custom CSS too. If I am saving this, the text will be rendered in a red color. If you want to set the background or else if you want to do with uh, some other fun functionalities, you could be able to do it as we are working with the HTML format. Okay. So this is about the display. 
and a video of functions. By using the functions, we could be able to create some formulas and messages, aggregation queries, everything we could be able to do. And then um, we do have groups. So we have uh, this complete setup, right? This complete setup is called a step. OK, once you are drag and drop your step, you could be able to include your fields. If I'm drag and drop step number three, and if, you, if I'm opening this one, So here I could able to drag and drop my fields. If I need to include my text field, I need, I could able to drag and drop over here. OK, this is for text. And if you want to include your custom LWC custom component, we do have an input called uh, custom lightning web component. And you could able to drag it over here. And need to select the exact component name. OK, here. So all the LWC component will be available over here. If you are created your custom LWC, the name will be avail automatically available here. You could be able to select it. OK. And, and then we do have blocks and edit blocks, radio button groups, and everything we do have. Type ahead. This one is somewhat different. Type ahead. So I do have a entering the type ahead in the first block. So I do have a type ahead over here. If you preview. So it will be acting as a search box. OK, if you want to make a call out to the third party system, you could be able to do it by using type ahead. And uh, if you want to search any of the records inside your uh, Salesforce, you could be able to use it. OK, if you are typing any of the values over here, like a test record, if the record is available inside your uh, Salesforce, this one could be able to return the data over here. OK, so this is the help of type ahead. And then uh, we have a lot of inputs, checkbox, currencies, uh, date. Uh, we could be able to try all those things. If you want, you could be able to perform it. OK, for an example, if it is uh, image, we could be able to drag and drop here and you have to select it. The URL for the image. OK, then if you want to select multi select or else password. So in, in custom components, like uh, if you are going to create ARA component or else LWC component, we need to create all those properties over here. The API name, label name, and then whether it is required or not, whether it needs to be added as a read-only field, the maximum and the minimum lens. OK, so all those things we need to create it if you are going to create a custom component. OK, here everything will be quite simple. Just we need to drag and drop the field. Once after you are drag and dropping the field, you could be able to uh, give the values over here. OK. And then if the field, uh, if I'm having type of head field and uh, if I need to render this field by using a uh, condition, we, uh, we do have a conditional view here. You have to make a condition whether if both the things should be um, applicable in the sense we need to Check with the all conditions are met. If any of the condition is met, it could be added as a R condition. OK, if it is all. Another group with any condition met. If you are adding over here, this one will be adding as a R condition. OK, so we could be able to perform the different set of conditions over here. OK. And we do have ranges. So for the ranges, we do have um, uh, the complete set and then a minimum and a maximum values. OK. And then uh, some set of uh, pick list values or all pick list values also we could able to use by using select and then uh, text areas, time, URL, everything we could able to use it by using input. And then we do have Omniscript. OK, so uh, I do have Omniscript over here. In the setup, uh, there is a checkbox called reusable. If I selecting the checkbox uh, as a reusable, then in the Omniscript, our Omniscript will be shown to the other set of Omniscript. So this is my parent Omniscript. Let's say this one is my child Omniscript. In the child Omniscript, I, I should enable this reusable checkbox. Okay, Then only the child component 
will be available in the parent for the selection. Okay, for the communication selection. So this is all about the elements. Okay, so other than the elements, uh, we do have um, how to enable uh, how to enable LWC to interact with the OmniScript. To enable our uh, custom LWC to interact with the OmniScript, we need to extend OmniScript base mix in interface. Okay, so this interface um, we could be able to get it from the namespace uh, ns I, uh, slash omniscript base mixing. Okay, this ns is uh, purely on uh, namespace. Uh, if I'm using uh, health cloud, then I need to use um, velocity hel, and if I'm using public sector, I need to use uh, velocity underscore ps, and if I'm using uh, insurance package, I need to use a velocity underscore ins. Okay, so these are other some different set of uh, namespaces which is available already in the process library of velocity on Om studio. And this is how we could be able to use it. Okay, need to extending the interface over here. So the next one is uh, about the OmniScript base Excel interface. Okay, this one uh, will you used to update an OmniScript data JSON, and uh, we could be able to pass the parameters. And uh, if you want to send the parameters, or else you need to get the response. Everything you could be able to do it in the OmniScript base mixing interfaces. Okay. So our recommend is to uh, custom LWC extending the OmniScript base mix and component. Once we are getting or uh, once we are extending the custom LWC with OmniScript base mix and component, so this one will not be extend or override an OmniScript to with the normal LWC. Okay, and the custom Lightning Web component built outside of the packages, we cannot use it inside our Salesforce LWC. OK, so if you want to use any of our resources, so those things will not be applicable to get it in our custom LWC. OK, so the next set of slides will be taken care of by Chola Darnika. I'll be handing over the sessions to Chola. Yeah, hi everyone. Good evening. So yeah, so far we have learned about uh, the things like what is OmniScript and the elements available in the OmniScript, as well as we also learned how to enable the LWC to communicate with an OmniScript. So thanks, Kadir. Thanks for the detailed explanation. So now I'm going to start with the topic, the how to override the elements with a custom LWC. So to uh, to override the standard elements available in the OMS script with a custom LWC, uh, we just need the name of the parent LWC. This is a prerequisite that we need to uh, to override the standard element. So for the Salesforce already provided us a readme documentation. So I just added the link here. If needed, we'll also uh, ping that in the chat. So this will redirect us to the page where you could be able to see various releases, packages, and the uh, related to the uh, base OmniScript template files. So once you click the download button there, you could be able to find the in the downloaded files, you could be able to find the folder named OmniBase template where you will get a respective LWC parent component and the documentation related to that. So the first thing is to make the custom Lightning Web Component compatible with the light Velocity Lightning Web Component. We must need to set two metadata tags in our XML configuration file. Uh, you, most, of, most of you may already have aware of those two tags like uh, runtime namespace and is exposed. Is exposed is a general tag. We need to set it as true to make it available for uh, available uh, on the script in any other places like a portal or be used in other pages. So we need to set the is exposed meta tag to be true and the runtime namespace as Kadir already mentioned right so we need to add the namespace of your velocity package so uh, here the ns defines the namespace of the velocity package if it is a velocity insurance we'll be having it as velocity ins if it is an omni studio we'll be adding it as an omni studio similar to that we need to add the uh, velocity package namespace in this tag
Let us quickly have the uh, small example of how to override the text element here. So if we are overriding the on the script text element, so as mentioned in the previous slide, we need to extend the parent component. The parent LWC component for the text element is an on the script text. That's why I have extended the on the script text here. I'm just imported it and I'm just extending it in our custom LWC. That's how we need to do. And the other methods and the properties that we are need to overwrite, right? So those details will be available on the documentations, readme files. So when we review those files, you could be able to see the different methods and parameters that that the, that our that we could be able to customize and we can change the behavior. So I'm planning to show the demo on how to override the text element, date element, and some of the uh, use cases related to the uh, step chart and the save and exit uh, pop-up acknowledgement. So before moving the going to that demo, uh, team, do you have any questions? Uh, hi, Amit. Um... Uh, Chola, this is Ravindra. So basically, this uh, velocity scripts are like uh, managed package, right? Mm -hmm. So since it, it's a managed package, that we are going to override uh, their properties, everything, or how it's going to work? How the relationship yeah. would be? How the relationship would be? If yeah. we are going to override, uh, we need to have some sort of relationship or we have to override the relationship that is already defined in the managed package, right? Correct. So that so, I'm going to explain more in the demo session to Ravindra okay. so to answer okay. your questions more. So uh, they already provided, as I mentioned, right? So they already provided the readme files, which gives us a more insight on what the, what are the properties that they are using and what are the method they are using. So we'll be covering it in the demo, Ravindra. Uh, thanks, Chola. Yeah, thank you. So if there is no question, let us uh, move to the demo part. So I have just created some sample site page here and have placed the demo uh, on the script that created for this uh, particular meetup. So the first item is a text override. I have placed the text override related components in this step. So I just named the field as a standard first name and custom first name. It's nothing but then the standard first name. We are just using the standard text uh, element that was available in the normal script. In the custom uh, first name field, I have just uh, extended the standard thing with a custom LWC. Uh, so what about the text that we have? Uh, that we put in this particular uh, input field will be placed as is since it is a standard one. So in the custom LW, in, the, in the custom text input where I have ex extended the custom LWC, I have included the logic to change the change all the characters to the lower case. For example, even though I am typing the text in the upper cases. When I move out of this text, it automatically changed all the letters to the lower case. So this functionality basically we just extended the out of box text element with the per custom lwc once i'm done with the demo we'll also show the components and the properties that how we have used so this is a date override thing so this is a standard date field uh, we could be able to pick any date using the date picker here this is a custom field, means the standard field that I have placed by extending uh, our, uh, I have created also created the custom LWC and extended it in the standard element. So the logic behind here is I just provided the maximum date of the uh, date pick values as uh, October 10, so that the other dates in the date picker are disabled. So this we have just extended our uh, standard element with our custom LWC.
let us review the OMNIS script now. So this is the OMNIS script that we have created for this demo. The first uh, place, so I have showed the demo, right? So this is a standard text element that I just dragged and dropped here. This is a custom one, so nothing but the extended, uh, that this particular text element is extended with the custom LWC. You could able to extend it in the properties. When you scroll down, you have an option to override this with the LWC component. I have just chosen the LWC that I have created for this demo, like LWC override component text. So, as already mentioned in the slide, so the first prerequisite is to extend the parent LWC component, right? So the OmniScript text is a parent LWC component for the text element properties. So I just imported it and extended it to our custom component. So we have uh, different methods available in the OmniScript text. I just used to handle blur to just to change the values to the lower case. Similar for the date, we have multiple methods available there. I just used a set element uh, formatted values there to change uh, to set the maximum value for the date picker as particular value. What could I do? So to know about the methods and the parameters available, so I just added the link in the PPT, right? So this is the URL. So when you move to this URL, this page contains all the LWC components readme available for an Omni script. So by extending those parent components only, we are going to customize the behavior and styling. And the important note here is if there is any update in the release on the packages or something, they will be releasing the items here too with an updated files. When you click download, you could able to download the file in your local system. The Omni based templates will be downloaded to the system so that you can refer that and you can extra build up to your custom LWC. So I have just already downloaded it. When, when you download it, it will be like a, it will be in the zip format. You can just open it up. When you open the Omni based templates, you can see all the elements folders here, like a date element, text, currency. So you could able to see the folders here. When you open it, you could able to see the HTML file, some of the thing, thing have an HTML and the readme files. The readme file will give the details about the element. For example, here I already opened the readme file for the text. By viewing this read, readme file, you will come to know about what are the parameters like the placeholder input type. So these are the parameters that they are using and these are the methods they are using. In our demo, I just use the handle blur method to change the values, to set the value of the uh, input text once after we move over the cursor from the input. Any questions so far? So if I take silence as a no, I'm just moving with another uh, scenario like so. Uh, here. So you could able to see the steps three, step four and step five. I added to the normal script with the uh, same header as a question. So in one of the use cases we have, right? So uh, we have the step name as a similar, but it may not needs to be as a, a separate step chart means we need to, uh, if the requirement come for us to concatenate all those items, we could not able to achieve that in an out of box L, uh, step chart. So for this reason, probably we will go with extending the standard uh, step chart with our custom LWC. So to extend those from the setup, in an Omni script from the setup, you could able to see the element type to LWC component mapping. So where you can provide the element type and the respective custom LWC that to extend those elements. Let me also show the example here.
So demo step chart is a custom LWC I have built to override the standard step chart. Previously, we had five steps, right? So based on the request or based on the, the customization, I just modified it as in three steps, uh, but still the question session will have the three slides like question A, question B and question C. So those kind of customization as per our request from the business or as per our requirement on the business flow, we could able to do that. For that, we are using a custom LWZ override. A similar way, when I click save for later, the custom, sorry, in the standard out of box on the script, we could be able to see the pop up here. And when I click OK, it will just show up the message like this. And uh, the end user could be able to see there is some details like URL and other stuff. So if we need, if if there is a requirement not to show those details to the end user, even we could be able to change the acknowledgement. This particular component is a save and exit acknowledgement box. So you could be able to override that too. I'll also show the demo. So similar to the step chart, how we have overrided. it. I'm just going to override the save for later acknowledgement pop up too. So before overriding that with the custom LWC, we have seen the different messages when we click OK, right? Now I just overrided it with a just a pop up message here. So these are the custom uh, component that we have developed for this demo to override the chart as well as a say for uh, later thing. So we could be able to provide the temp or whatever the text we need in the template as well as the JS logic. So we could be able to provide those customization in the in our own build custom LWC and we can override these directly from the own script in the setup. So similar to the step chart and the uh, say for later acknowledgement, we could be able to even uh, customize or change the styling of all the models available and the buttons available in the thing. So that's how we could be able to completely fulfill the requirements or the uh, thing that the end user or business needs. That's all I have for demo team. Uh, so do you have any questions on it? Or shall uh, 
Our team, anyone have any questions so far? Uh, so, Chola, the de LWD component, uh, which uh, you are demoing, right? Uh, it has been developed by you or it is available in App Exchange or somewhere? No, those are developed by me. So, I developed it uh, just for this demo. So, to override the standard elements, right? The chart are the save and save for later. So, I developed the custom components. Okay. And uh, the, the uh, can you just go to the, the, uh, application once. <coughs> Here we are we are replacing right how it's been defined uh, the uh, it's everything it's done on code right the override fu fu functionality. And the date functionality. It's it's everything it's done on the LWZ module or, or, or it's all done on Apex. It's on LWC. So it will just uh, it takes all the out of box means what all whatever the uh, out of box properties writes in the text. So it invokes all the properties. Addition to that, we were extending that particular with our custom LWC component and we were adding few more logics to it. When we take the text as an example, so uh, whatever the out of box, have, if we need a place where we could be able to provide all those data, but along with this, if we need to extend some of the uh, properties or behavior of the uh, element means we could be able to override it with the custom LWC. That's what we have developed the custom LWC component. So. And we have uh, included the prerequisite, right? Like the parent. Uh, LWC component for the text element is almost cryptic, so we have imported it and we are extending it in our custom component and we were just overriding or extending few of the method with our custom logic. Hope I answered your question right. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, these are full uh, full customization, so uh, means uh, the chart and the other item have completely customized the whole things based on the request. Uh, but the element that I have showed, right, the date and the text uh, thing. So those are all just a few additional uh, extension, that means additional behavior we have added with the uh, uh, out of box on the script element. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Shola. Uh, I you. have a question. Uh, can we change the look and feel of uh, the existing uh, buttons like save for later? Uh, just we have a link, right? Uh, can we make it as a, like a button like a next uh, by changing its uh, properties? Is that possible? Yes, we can. Uh, we have a, a document. We have not yet done that. We means we I particularly not experienced on the changing those items, but we have the base template as I mentioned, right? So you could be able to review the all the elements and the properties available in the Omnis script. So if there is a, a parent LWC component found here, you could be able to definitely extend that properties from using the custom LWC. Oh. Like hi, I have already overrided the acknowledgement tab, right? So we could be able to change the acknowledgement tab. You could be able to change the model of the save and exit. I'm not sure about the save 